we've got a lot of new news about the Veil Guard this week with an in-depth article from Game Informer. Lots of people are talking about this, so I'm just going to give you a bit of a summary of what all of this is really saying about the game. Hi, my name is Hubert Shorter and welcome to another edition of It's Gaming. First and foremost, Veilguard should not be considered open world. Interestingly enough, one of the developers has said that Veilguard's Thedas operates as a hub and spoke design where the needs of the story are served by the level design. A version of Inquisition's Crossroads, a network of teleporting Illuvians, returns, and it's how players will traverse across northern Thedas. Instead of a connected, open world, players will travel from Illuvian to Illuvian to different stretches of this part of the continent. This is good news, I think, although some people are going to be a little bit upset that you've not got those open world elements that you will, of course, have brought over from Baldur's Gate 3. Everyone is always going to have Baldur's Gate 3 in the back of their mind, but it is what it is. A lot has also been said about the character creator, which you know me, I love a good character creator. And everything seems to suggest that this one is going to be as detailed as the one we found in Dragon's Dogma 2. They go on to say you can select pronouns separately from gender and adjust physical characteristics like height, shoulder width, chest size, glute and bulge size. Yes, I said that. Hip width, how bloodshot your eyes are, how crooked your nose is and so much more. There must be hundreds of sliders to customize these body proportions and features like skin hue, tone, melanin and just about anything else you might adjust on a character. And yes, there is nudity. I'll just leave that one there. On the issue of combat, which I know is a big issue for, well, for myself actually, the developers are very clear that they've moved away from the pause and implement strategy point of view, but they've gone more for a real-time sort of thing, but I'll explain. Following the trend of prior Dragon Age games, Veilguard has completed the series' shift from tactical strategy to real-time action. But fret not, a tactical pause and play mechanic returns to satiate fans who remember the series' origins and what they're actually talking about was what I just mentioned that brilliant pause, decide what you're going to do, and then unpause the game. Um, I prefer that to real time, but I suppose in some ways they've um, given us the ability to pause the game, which is fine, I guess. But they haven't finished talking about um, the whole issue of combat. There are some other combat elements that... Um, they really wanted to refer to. The devs went on to say, players complete every swing in real time with special care taken to animation swing through and cancelling. There's a dash, a parry, the ability to charge moves and a completely revamped healing system that allows you to use potions at your discretion by hitting right on the D-pad. You can combo attacks and even bookmark combos with a quick dash, which means you can pause a combo status with a dash to safety and continue the rest of the combo afterward. It looks even cooler than it sounds. Each character will play the same in that you execute light and heavy attacks with the same buttons, use abilities with the same buttons and interact with the combo wheel in the same way regardless of which class you select. Brilliant idea. But a sword and shield warrior uh, like we used in the prologue can hip fire or aim their shield to throw it like Captain America. I cannot wait to try that out. 
whereas our human mage uses the same button to throw out magical ranged attacks. Again, it looks like they've spent some real time making sure that this is going to perform the best way possible. Companion customization has also been addressed in this game. You can advance your bonds by helping companions on their own personal quests and by including them in your party for main quests. Every relationship level you rank up, shown on their character sheet, lets you a skill point to spend on them. The choices you make, what you say to your companions, how you help them, and more, all matter to their development as characters and party members. And with seven companions, yes seven, there's plenty to customize from bespoke gear to abilities and more. Each companion has access to five abilities. You can only take three into combat. So it's important to strategize different combos and synergies with your party. So you've really got to think about what you're going to do when you're going into battle, so to speak. And again, this is a fantastic feature. Now, there's a little bit of spoilery stuff in terms of the beginning of the game, and I'm not going to share that with you. I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But, you know, if you do want to find out what that is, you can just read the article for yourselves. I do want to talk about this all important place called the Lighthouse, though. So after the encounter with Solus, which we all saw in the 20 minute gameplay, Rook wakes up with Harding and Neve in the lair of the Dread Wolf himself, a special magical realm in the Fade called the Lighthouse. It's a towering structure centered amongst various floating islands. Epler says, much like Skyhold in Inquisition, the Lighthouse is where your team bonds, grows and prepares for its adventures throughout the campaign. It also becomes more functional and homier as you do. Already though, it's a beautifully distraught headquarters for the Veil Guard. So you do have HQ and uh, presumably that's where you're going to interact more with your companions and maybe implement some romance options there rather than out in the field. All of this is truly exciting news and of course it's telling us so much more about this game. What we all really want to know is an actual release date. Don't know if we're going to get that by the end of the summer but I would assume considering that it's supposed to come out in fall 2024 that the announcement will come soon. So that's it in terms of more details about this upcoming game. I hope you found it useful. You can get much more in-depth information from the Game Informer website. I do advise you to read the article if you want that information. And as always, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.